Hey, I hope clinical was awesome. Uh, each day does. Oh, oh we're live. <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> All right. So this is my first uh, Instagram. Can I like do like this? Like you scream? All right, cool. Nah. Now, uh, now you're sideways. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. Okay, can you hear me? Hi. Yes, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much. For Hello, joining. how are you? Thank, thank you for introducing me. I do want to correct one thing. I did. So when you say 1099, I do a little bit of 1099 on the side, but I do have a W-2 job. So I go to work every day at the hospital. And then when I get off from that hospital, then I can do 1099. So I'll pick up like an endo or whatever, just like on the side. But like my full time is not 1099. Well, thank you for correcting me. So <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Keep me in check, okay? Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, I, 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 again, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I mm -hmm. will pretty much let you have the floor. If you want to just kind of give um, some of your background, uh, your history, your ICU experience, and then we can go through the questions that folks had for you. And then we can just kind of play it by ear and yeah. see how it goes. Okay, so I'll do a quick uh, quick thing. My name is Jared. Uh, I'm from South Central Los Angeles. I'm a CRNA in Houston, Texas. I've been practicing about seven, eight years now. Um, I love it. It's an amazing job. Uh, like Crystal said, I kind of fell into the profession. Um, I don't want to say haphazardly, but I want to say like when I was growing up, I had I never knew a single nurse in Los Angeles. I never knew anybody who worked in a, in a hospital. Um, it just kind of happened. And my story was just kind of going through high school, you know, barely making it out, like just doing the bare minimum, not really applying myself, always feeling like I could do better, but not really trying as hard. And then all my friends getting at that time, you can get accepted to um, one of the Cal State. So in California, we have like the UC system and like the Cal State system. So we have like UCLA and, and UC Berkeley. And then we have like the Cal State system, like Cal State Dominguez or um, Cal State Chino Hills or whatever. So the Cal State system pretty much is like if you graduate from high school and you do the requirements, like you should be able to get in and it, they make it a really good thing for the state to get educated. Like I couldn't get in any colleges. I, I tried, tried. I, I don't want to say I tried. I guess I thought I could get in. I couldn't. So at the last minute, ended up going to community college, which in retrospect is a great thing because all these people now are talking about student loans. And um, the cool thing now is for people to say, oh, well, just go to community college first and then you'll cut down your student loans. At that time, back in the day, it was really embarrassing mm -hmm. for you just to go to community college because all your friends are going to college and they're like, Jared, what's up? Shoot. And I'm like, I don't know. So when I went to community college, that ended up being a good thing because that kind of focused me a little bit that that made me say okay well now i need to figure out uh what to do with my life so went to community college i had a really good counselor there who, who was like hey don't take don't get crazy just take 12 units all you do is 12 units that's like the the minimum and like you can kind of figure out how college works and yeah. that's where i really started excelling because for me the difference Oh, and by the way, Crystal, I'm going to ramble. So if I ever, if this gets, just bring me back in. So, okay. uh, so that was the main thing, the main difference between me and uh, between college and high school for me is because like in high school, someone tells you, you, you got to get up at seven in the morning. Um, they tell you, well, not even seven or six in the morning. You got to be at six in the morning. For me, I was bust out to some of these high schools. Um, you know, just out to the Valley or whatever in LA. So you got to get up super early. People are always telling you to do. Whereas with college, like, okay, if I want to start at five o'clock in the afternoon, I want to start at three o'clock. Like you can just kind of be mm -hmm. more independent thinker or whatever. So that's where things started to kind of transform it for me, but I still didn't know what I was going to do in my life. I thought I was like, I'm like, okay, okay, well, I, I would be like a, a, a lawyer or I'm going to be, uh, I, I went to like a, a information for a chiropractic school. Like I was all over the place and the counselor at the community college was like, you know, you seem like you're a good kid. You need to get out of LA. There's, you know, there's gang bang and there's all types of stuff like that. Like, have you ever thought about going to HBCU? And I'm like, yeah, I used to watch the Cosby show. I heard about it. You know, like what's the HBCU? She's like, well, I went to the school 
you know, a small school in Nashville. There's a lot of good people. Like, you got to be on your up game when you go. But, like, if you go, you'll be around a lot of smart kids who are trying to do, do the right thing. So I said, cool. She's mm -hmm. like, so don't try to get into UCLA. She's like, I went to UCLA. I went to – I know that's where you're trying to transfer from. Transfer to – go to this HBCU. So I go, and it is exactly like – I don't know if any of your listeners – I hope you all are familiar with, like, the Cosby Show or A Different World. It was exactly like that. It was exactly what I needed where you just yeah. had all these people who were doing things. And so yeah. I went to Fisk University in Nashville. So I'm a L.A., regular L.A. dude, and I go to Nashville, Tennessee. It's my first time in Tennessee. And back in the day, this was before they had a football team. This was before they had the, the Tennessee Titans. This was, like, really, really uh, rural Nashville before it blew up, before mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey – before I even knew Dave Ramsey was in Nashville. Like, this was, like, just crazy rural Nashville. So I get there, I lose my luggage on the plane. I have no idea what I'm doing there, but I, I know I'm supposed to be there to try to educate myself and try to do something better. Cause I'm like, I barely made it. Somebody finally gave me a shot. I did okay at community college. They're giving me a scholarship for the school. I don't know what I want to do yet, but let me just figure it out. So I get to the school and I pick the, the, like the basic major. I say, okay, I'm gonna go into business because everybody says like become a business major. So I I'm, do this business major program. It's amazing. Um, I don't know. I still don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like, well, I guess I'll work in an office somewhere. I'll be a business manager or whatever, whatever. And at the time, so this, so all things happen for a reason. The, my particular HBCU was right across the street from Meharry Medical College. So Meharry Medical College is like the world's oldest um, African-American medical school, dental school, mm -hmm. And, and we kind of hang out together. So I'm starting to see all like these black doctors and dentists and people are going into anesthesia and they're walking across campus. And I'm starting, like the wheels are starting to turn because in LA, I wasn't used to that, but I'm seeing all these people who look like me who are doing this medical stuff. And I'm still, I'm still like, yeah, they're super smart though. I don't know if I could be down with that, but we start hanging out, we start studying together. So when I'm studying my business stuff, my friends are studying chemistry or they're studying science. And I still don't feel like I can do it, but, like, they're studying that stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And they're like, yeah, Jerry, you don't really have to study as hard as us because, like, we're going to be doctors one day. I'm like, all right, that's cool, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, oh, and at the time, too, so my school didn't even have a nursing program. So I still couldn't really get into it. I still was just in the back of my head. But this kind of lit the fire that, okay, I'm seeing people do stuff like me, and they look like me. So it's all starting to make sense. Met my met my girlfriend, who's now my wife, over there. She's she was trying to get into dental school. I still don't know what I'm trying to do with my life. And you know, just just by dating her and seeing her, I kind of start like she starts like coming on dates in scrubs. And I'm starting to like look at her. I'm like, man, like she looks gorgeous. Like these scrubs are amazing. And then the first <laughs> very first thought I had, I was 21. Wait a minute. Okay, I, Wait a minute. I know. It's, I'm telling you, Crystal. <laughs> I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a weird dude. So are you telling I see, me I need to wear scrubs on my day? Yes, from now yes, on? because okay. her. I remember when she came down the stairs in scrubs. That was the very first thing that said, like, man, like, dude, she's gorgeous. Like, she looks really good. And I start thinking, I want to get a job where I wear scrubs. That was the very. It wasn't studying with those people. It was really seeing my my girlfriend time, who's now my wife. So. But I still don't know what to do. I still don't know what to do. And I finally graduated with this business degree. So I've graduated with the business degree. My my girlfriend is, what is she doing? I think she might be in her third year of dental school at this time. So like this is now years later, like years later. So I would go to my business job in a cubicle. So I graduated, lived the American dream, mm -hmm. made it out of South Central, got this business degree. And I would go in a cubicle and I would hate like, you know, you know, a movie Office Space, like Cats with the Staplers and um, yeah, you you stole my thing out the refrigerator. And I would just feel like, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? So I would go back. My school, my HBC was really, really close. So I would go back on campus during lunch in my suit and they'd be like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, man, dude, my life sucks. Like I'm working in this cubicle. I'm working in this like like this finance company and I hate it. And I went to my professor and I said, I can't wait for my life to start. And he's like, Jared, this is your life. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit. Like, this is my, oh, I'm sorry. I cut. Like, yo, this is my life. So I'm still like, what am I going to do? I'm dating my girlfriend. I'm seeing her in scrubs every day. 
And it just clicks to me. I was like, you know what? I should probably be a nurse because if I'm a nurse, then I could figure out what area of life like I can do. Like, I'm sure I could be like a psychiatric nurse. Like, I don't, like at this time, I didn't like blood. I didn't like needles. I didn't like IVs. Like, I'm still a business dude. So I'm like, okay, I got it. I'll be a psychiatric nurse practitioner. So that was the plan. So I get into a program. Very weird story. Very weird. Not, not your typical anesthesia story. I'm getting to it. It, it comes in circles. So uh, at the time, they had a program which was like a bachelor. And they probably still have this for, for people. So if you had a bachelor's degree, you can get a BSN degree. You would have to do like a 16-month accelerated program. So I get into this uh, program at Belmont University, also in Nashville. They're like, you got this bachelor's. You're going to go hardcore nursing school every single day, five days a week from eight to five in order to finish this, this program and get, and get, a, um, get a BSN, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. So I get into this program and also amazing. I'm like, wow, nursing is really cool. Like, I like this. I don't have to quite decide what area I'm going to get into. I can kind of figure out what I'm going to do with my life. I'm still kind of floating. I think I'm like 26 at the time, whatever. So I'm still like trying to figure it out. And I do like my, my clinicals in psychiatric because I want to be like this like psychiatric nurse practitioner. That was what I decided on. And I do the clinicals and I remember we're at this big university hospital and, I, and they're telling me, okay, what you want to do is you want your patients to smoke cigarettes because like them smoking cigarettes will help them mentally, even though it's bad for like the respiratory system. And I'm like this super trying to be a nursing student. I was like, no, that's not, that's not real healthcare. I can't, I can't let them smoke. This is so, this is terrible. And they're like, nah, just get with it. And I'm like, nah, this is whack. And I'm still trying to figure out what to do in my life. Finally, we get to the critical care part of the practicum and we get into this critical care thing and I'm like oh we're actually solving problems like I'm doing trauma we're doing blood all this stuff I thought I would never do like you always say oh I'm gonna never do this I'm gonna never do that like I was literally the person to this day I don't cook I love hamburgers I'm not gonna I'm not the dude to cook a hamburger because I'm like oh it's bloody and yada yada like I'm still skirmish but for whatever reason, when I did like the critical care and it was somebody's life in my hands or I was hanging bags of blood, it didn't seem disgusting to me. It was like, oh, I'm like actually helping save this person. So that was another mind shift change for me trying to do like the psych guy and like the different type of nursing to be like, oh, critical care. And then once I got into critical care and then get into the ICU, this was all in nursing school. The light went off. And the, and the important point that I want to make here is I decided I want to be, I figured out, oh, well, there's these nurses called CRNAs and they do a lot of this critical care stuff and like a lot of this trauma stuff that I'm learning in school. And this is a master's degree that I can get after. So I started thinking about that. But when you go into nursing, you kind of can't necessarily say, I don't necessarily want to be a bedside nurse. I probably want to be a CRNA later on. So I kind of have to like navigate that in nursing school. Cause they're like, Oh, what do you want to do? I was like, Oh, I want to be a CRNA. And everybody like, what? And like, Oh, never mind." So I still was in the back of my mind thinking about it, but I was like kind of nervous, whatever. So finally we get to the point where I'm done with my um, BSN classes. I'm now heavily in student debt. I got, degrees from the HBCU in business. I got the, the, the BSN degree. I got all the, the community college stuff. I still haven't found a job, still haven't done anything. I get out and I start working as like a bedside nurse in the ICU because this is one of the requirements to become a CRNA. And I'm still kind of thinking, I'm like, okay, well, what is the best route to CRNA school? And I thought like there's different type of ICUs that you can work in. You can work in the CV ICU. You can work in the MICU, uh, uh, Nick, Nick near ICU. So I, thought, I, I find now, like, oh, well, if you work in the uh, cardiovascular ICU, then it's a straightforward path to CRNA school because you have to learn about the drips and the, and the cardiac system, the heart system, all that stuff. It's very difficult to get into the cardiac ICU. It was cutthroat. You know, when they say nurse eat their own, I went to a place where, you know, we had some savages. So I had to, I had to navigate that system and get into there. And finally, go through like that critical care stuff, get into like the ICU. I'm now working. I'm now trying to figure out how to get into school. And I hit my 
30th, 30th roadblock of my life. How does somebody get into CRNA school where you're supposed to be so intelligent, so smart, have all these good grades, and your grades suck? And what do you do? Because I was competing, competing against people. At this time, I'm about, what am I, 28, 30, whatever it was. Yeah, 28, maybe. So I'm like, I'm like, yo, these, I'm, I'm dealing with these chicks who just got out, straight out of high school. They went straight into nurse school. They always knew what they wanted to do with their life. Like, they have straight A, 4.0. I struggled to get into college. I struggled to get into nursing school. I did all this stuff, and now I'm here, and now I'm trying to get into CRA school. Like, how am I going to get to this next step? So I'm, as you can tell, somewhat analytical, even though, you know, I kind of I think about things. So I took a spreadsheet. And I went to the AANA website and I said, how many schools are there in the country? I believe there's 110 at the time. So I took all the schools in the country and there was like one in Puerto Rico. And then I wrote down every single name of every single school. And at that time on the website, you could have every, it would tell you how many students were in there and it would tell you who the program director was. So I would call, and this is probably crazy idea. I called every single program director. I'm like, hey, how you doing? My name's Jared. Um, I, I want to apply for CNA school. Um, I just kind of get a feel for like how many people you accept, how many people you interview, because you don't have to interview. And if the person hung up on me, or if they gave me a bad vibe, or if they're really weird, then I cross them out. Sometimes they cross me out. And I got down to a list out of like the 105, like 10 of them actually talked to me. Because the program directors are real people. And then if you, you can kind of get what an idea was of this, this was, was 2008 this? I went to school. So, yeah, 2008. Damn, I'm old. Okay. And it's now 2019. So the program directors are real people. So I was like, I got a vibe with some of them. And, and then I just applied because I figured like, okay, well, these are the 10 who will talk to me. These are the ones I applied to. So at that time, I mean, I had like a 4.0 whatever from nursing school. But I had like a 1.9, whatever, from high school, like a two point something from uh, bat my first bachelor's. Like, I would have to take like A&P or whatever from like a community college. At my job, I would hang out with this. And this is weird. Like, you have friends now that I see you talk to who hang out with CRN. It was for me to try to hang out with CRNAs or people who were because I was like, I don't want to hang out with them. They might pimp me. They might ask me questions. Like it was a totally different time. But I would try to go to these conferences and try to like ask people. And, you know, you would try to get a feel for just to try to figure out what you could do. Like taking CCRN, like there was just all that. Like I would take uh, like ACLS and try to be an ACLS instructor. Like I try to do all these like things, like every single thing I could do because my grades absolutely sucked. Um, so after contacting the program directors, I got down to my 10. I applied. Luckily, out of the 10, I think I got like three interviews. And the interviews is like when you can go in front of them, they like sit you in front of a panel. Or back then, it was like, like you stole, like it was interrogation. Like, tell me about phenylephrine. Tell me the mechanism action of ephedrine. And you would have to know all this stuff and you would have to study for it. So I studied for the interviews. And out of that, out of the six or whatever, I probably got into two schools. And one of the schools was the school I wanted to go to because my girlfriend, who now is my wife, like she was still in Nashville. So I got into the school in Nashville. So it all worked out. Got into MTSA. Shout out to MTSA. And um, I guess we could stop there because I've been rambling. I guess that's kind of like <laughs> more or less the first part of the story. That was quite the introduction. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not really, you know, I'm not, I don't go live. I don't, I'm not really big on IG. I mean, I'm a no, stalker you, on IG. But again, I'm not a stalker, but, you know, I'm you not used to this. You're doing a so. great job. You're doing an excellent well, thank job. You. Uh, uh, so thank you. Um, okay, first question. Out of all of that that you just told us, what would you say was yeah. the toughest part of the journey to becoming a CRNA? Um, the toughest part. You mean of getting into school or would you say of actually of once I was in school or I guess let me uh, I say the tough the toughest part of getting into school is the competition like it, it if I if I say I want to be a lawyer 
I honestly feel that everybody will support me. If I say I want to be a doctor, I feel like people will support me. If you tell people at the time when I was coming up, I tell people you want to be a CRNA, first it's like, well, what is that? What do you mean? And then the nur nurses in general, and this is where I go, I get people who give me hate mail. I feel nurses in general don't necessarily support that notion. Like, like I feel like it's like, it could be like, I feel like at the time, if I told a, 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 a fellow nurse, like, hey, I want to I wanna do this degree, I feel like it would have been a little, and I know, I don't even feel like, I know I got like a little bit of pushback. So you're navigating, you're navigating your family, you're navigating other people in the profession, you're navigating people you're competing against. Because even if you, when you go work on the ICUs at the time, I was working amongst people who either A, were ICU nurses for life, or B, were ICU nurses because they want to get an anesthesia school. So any of my coworkers were my direct competition right. to get into school. Right. So it's very, it's like a lot, it's, it's a minefield of all this, these things where nobody's necessary. I mean, look, there was no crystal in 2008 writing books to help me. Like now, all the people coming up, like you, like you can go to Amazon and be like, oh, okay, this is what's up. Or people can get on live. Like it was very, very, very treacherous different. and yeah. it was different. So I think that yeah. was the main thing because like there was no support. Like it wasn't really like, I mean, it was like some sharks. And yeah. when I have students now, I, I take students occasionally now, like at my job and the students are so friendly and they'll talk to you. And like they hang out and I was thinking like, yo, like when I was a student, like it was like, it was like Vietnam. Like it was like, I, I, it's just like my mind is blown by like how much more accommodating things are. And yeah, yeah. so basically that's it. Like that, that was, it was, it was difficult, but you know, like they say, or what, not even what they say was, was somebody had told me is like the time is going to pass anyway. And it doesn't really yeah. matter how bad it is because like, it's going to, it's going to get easier. Like you're going to get used to it. You're going to get stronger. And it's, it's all going to be good. Like you just got to do one day at a time, just kind of get through it. So. I mean, you definitely raised a good point because I was like, I was trying around that time also 2008, 2009, filing that in 2010 time period. And you're right. Like it was different. Um, there was no, there was Facebook, um, but there was no mm. Instagram yet. Um, there was no such thing as live. There was no such thing as Snapchat. There was YouTube, but I was, I just now started using YouTube. Um, so, you know, to even find a CRNA to like shadow or like call. Oh up my God. Say, it, it was hard. <laughs> yeah. Hard, hard, yeah. Hard. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that was always a weird CRNA thing, like to even, yeah. Yeah, like diversity was in its infancy. It was just starting. So I was able to communicate with Lena um, Gould. But, you know, even diversity wasn't as big as it is now. So I feel like um, the outlets and the support are much more out there now for, for people who want to become CRNAs. So absolutely. Yeah. Like I was obviously a unicorn in my class. Like we had like 70 dudes and 70 students and I was probably the only I mean it was like it's two or three uh uh African American males and we're all good friends to this day but yeah it was just it wasn't like that like I didn't know Lena until I still don't really know Lena I mean we're I've, I've like we're we're you know we're Facebook friends or whatever but like it wasn't really like that and like the shadowing thing it wasn't there and let me just say one thing about shadowing if you do have any students or people who are who are going to shadow the main observation I have with shadowing a CRNA is do not walk away from that experience saying, I'm not going to do this because of whatever happened that day. Like, like the analogy I like to give students, the analogy I like to give people is when you're shadowing a CRNA, it could quite possibly be the most boring experience you've ever had in your life. You're not going to be used to standing. You're not going to be used to not touching anything. And I remember shadowing and shout out to people who even let me shadow back in the day because like it hadn't been all like you know whatever but i do remember like one of my first experiences shadowing i was like yo i can't do this like this job is boring this job sucks and then when i actually became a crna and actually started doing it i'm like this is the most interesting thing i've ever done like you're constantly thinking so what it yeah. what it really is is like the analogy i, I get to people is like it's like baseball like i cannot stand watching baseball like you're watching a baseball game it takes forever. You, you eat hot dogs. You're like, man, this sucks. 
But if you get out there with your friends and you play like game of softball, like you have some beers, whatever, you kick it, got some music, Drake's on the background, you're like, oh man, we're having fun. So when you actually do something yourself, like when you're actually pushing the drugs or actually coming up with a plan or actually intubating yourself or actually doing the, the job, you're like, yo, this is, this is ill. This is a great thing. But when you, when you yeah. shout somebody as a student, so whatever happens, don't take that as like a bad thing. Just keep going forward. So anyway. Amen. Uh, <laughs> hi, Corey. Hi, Latanya. Yes, in 2000, I can't even imagine what it was like in 2000. Um, I know that's when Latanya went to CRNA school. So, um, is that Latanya Mims? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, that's like that's the uh, that's the homie who put me on the other day. Uh, thank oh. you. Yeah, she's also a great. So, have you done a live with her yet? She was my first. Act. She is the reason why oh. this about her and I did a live um, the very first time I first started going live and ever since then CRNAs SRNAs RNs have been like on board just kind of doing lives with me so it's been awesome absolutely yeah she's a great resource she uh, this is how small the CRNA community is so mm -hmm. she's in Houston and I I've never met her before until recently I, I, I mostly had mutual friends mm -hmm. she posted something for like a job she hit me up, or I hit her up, and I'm like, hey, I just saw your thing on Facebook. We met, and now, like, she's, she does, like, shirts and everything. So mm -hmm. it's a very small, integrated uh, yeah. community. So, yeah, shout out to Latanya. So very, very good. Yep, yep, yep. I know. I've never met her either. I've, I've never met most of She kind of reminds me of you, like, in person. Like, you guys are, are super similar. Yeah, so, super similar. I take that as a That's compliment. a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> good thing. All right, next question. How did you study in CRNA school? Mm. So uh, whatever you do, you got to go to a full list. We had a, so my school was basically, we did all our clinicals at Vanderbilt University in Nashville. So, like they had like a 24 hour library. So I would go to the library and just get it in. Like get my, I know you shouldn't eat McDonald's. I, I, I know, I know, I know. They had a McDonald's right across the way. I'll take my little McDonald's, sneak into the library, and just get to it. Because I'm not a dude. There are people, there were people in my class who could read something once and it would make sense. I'm not that guy. I would have to read constantly and constantly and constantly and just always just be in it and in it in it. So I would just push myself to be there all night and just, I mean, literally two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I would just study every day and I would just get through it. I mean, I would. You just get through it. You hang in the library. I have my little McDonald's, and I would eat my little McDonald's, and I would study, and I would read. And actually, I got my, some of my books still here, which I haven't cracked open in 10 years, but I still kept them. But, yeah, you just, you just got to push through it, you know. You got to push through it. How did you stay motivated when you were in school? There are people – there were people in my class who could read something once, and it would make sense. I'm not that guy. I would have to read constantly and constantly and constantly and just always just be in it and in it in it. So I would just push myself to be there all night and just, I mean, literally two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I would just study every day and I would just get through it. I mean, I would, you just get through it. You hang in the library. I have my little McDonald's and I would eat my little McDonald's and I would study and I would read. And actually, I got my, some of my books still here, which I haven't cracked open in 10 years, but I still kept them. But yeah, you just you just gotta push through it, you know. You gotta push through it. How did you stay motivated when you were in school? Mm, the the best way to stay motivated is to not think about. I know people say like when they talk about like the seven habits of highly effective people, like one of the habits is like I guess habit two: begin with the end in mind. So you're supposed to like look into the future and think, mm -hmm. well, where I want to be in ten years and twenty years. And that's good. But honestly, like when you're in the bat, like when you're in the, in the struggle and it's going down every day and you got, you got care plans, you got people coming at you and you, you don't know if you can get kicked out. Like you could literally have a bad outcome and they'd be like, I mean, you're not going to make it out of this program, whatever. Uh -huh. I you yeah. can't really think to me, I, I don't think you can really think about what's going to happen 10 years from now or 20 years from now or when you finish. I think you got to think about, what I need to do next right now, tomorrow. It's like if you were in a war and people were shooting at you, you're not going to think, man, I wonder what it's going to be like when I get that medal at the end. You're probably going to think, I got to dodge these bullets. 
it's some it's some it's some killers out here. So like you just have I you have to think about every single day what I do. If I was on a rotation where we were doing hearts, that's all I'm thinking about is hearts. I'm thinking about these are the CRNAs. These are the CRNAs that I got to shadow with. These are the ones that are going to give me trouble. These are the ones that are tough. These are the ones that are lenient. I don't want to say this. I don't want to say, hey, can I go go home early? I don't want to say, hey, can I have an easy case? I want to be prepared. I want to have my little sheet out. I want to be I want to be in the in the moment in it when it's going down. Not like, oh, I can't wait till I get out of program because you don't know if you're gonna get out of program. Like you can you can you can get dismissed. Like you can get dismissed. So yeah. the the main thing about like now I now that I'm an adult and I'm out, yeah, I, I try to plan. I try to think about okay, what I want to do in the future, 2020. But like when you're in school and when you're trying to complete a goal, like you just gotta go go through it and keep your head down and not make any waves. So yeah. all right. Next question. <laughs> What was your living situation during school and how did you budget? Uh, so I, at the time, so at this time, the girlfriend who became a dentist was now my wife and we had children. We had twin boys and I got into school in November and the twin boys were born in September. So I get into school and I got two little babies and we have an apartment and I don't have any money and we got to pay for nannies and stuff. And, you know, I don't even know how, because you can't work. You know, my income had dropped. You can't work. So not only does my income drop from not being, from not being a, a nurse anymore in the ICU, but now I got two babies who, you know, twins require a lot of money. And then my wife is just kind of starting out, but she doesn't necessarily, I mean, she, you know, she's kind of trying to get to it, but we still didn't really have enough because we had to pay for, um, you know, we had to pay for stuff. So this is kind of how debt accumulates. Once you're, you know, because there's no way to really, I don't know how effective it is for you to budget when you can't have income, especially for some of your people who are single, like, I don't know how you would, how you would do that. Even with a spouse, like we didn't have any money. Like we had no money. Mm -hmm. We had no money. So, nah. you know, we just kind of, you just kind of got through it. Like I had a little apartment. There were some, there were some clinicals where my school might do like a PD clinical and they'd be like, okay, well, Jared, so my school was in Nashville. They'd be like, okay, Jared, well, you got to go to Ohio for six weeks and do this PD clinical and live in this hospital. So you would like live across in like apartment and you wouldn't see your family for six weeks or they'd be like, okay, well, you got to do this regional, so regional for your people who don't, you know, like, like learn how to do shoulder blocks, or whatever. Like, so you got to go to Texas. Some people have to go to Florida, like, and you would just be gone from your family. So you wouldn't have any money. You'd be gone from your family. At this time I had young children or, you know, they're like a, a couple months old. So you would just be gone and you would just be like, okay, well, this is what I got to do. Um, so you got to do what you got to do, but yeah, there's no way to really budget and that's kind of where, to me, that's where like the student loan debt crisis kind of happened. It didn't really happen for me. I kind of escaped. I remember, remember I was telling you people how I got over by going to Phoenix college. So I didn't really have that much debt. And then when I got, got out of, um, regular school, like a bachelor's from my HBCU, I didn't have really that much. I maybe had like. And I, I mean, to me, it was like 30,000, maybe like that. But then when I went to anesthesia school and I didn't have an income and my school is like probably the most expensive in the nation. And what I should have added to my spreadsheet at the time as a long to program directors and, you know, if I can, how many students are in each slot, how many people to interview, I should have added, added a column and said, how much does the school cost? Because my school was like, when I walked out, I walked out like 150K you know, in debt yeah. from, from anesthesia school. And then my wife also had like debt from dental school. Cool. So there's, a, I guess the short answer is there's no really effective way that I know to budget. People will tell you, this is where I'm going to go off the rails. People will tell you, um, don't go to college. And people will tell you, don't go to anesthesia school or CRNA school because it's going to cost a lot of money. And they're right, it's going to cost a lot of money. But if you can finish at all cost, finish at all cost, 
you will be able to make the money back and hopefully pay it back. Well, T.I. I say expeditiously. So like, it's going to be expensive. You're going to spend a lot of money. I mean, I guess the right answer, technically the right answer would be go to the military, uh, go to the military program and they pay you to go to school. But if you're like me and you're just trying to get into school and, and you don't, you just want to finish, you got to go where you got to go and you got to get in where you got to get in and you can't, and you don't have the money. You don't have $50,000 laying around. And when you're going with smart people, you're not going to necessarily, they, I don't know if there's, are there CRNA scholarships? Like, I know when you go to get your bachelor's, oh, what's up, I'm 19, I'm I know, I know when you get your bachelor's, like, you could probably get a scholarship, but if I'm competing against people who all got 4.0s in nursing school, I'm not getting a scholarship to go to CRNA, right. CRNA school. So you just got to, you just got to finish. And then once you get out, pay them back as soon as possible. And that's exactly the page I'm on now. Like, when I first got out of school, you know, you get like the huge checks, like you finally make it. And then you get like the fancy car, like I got the Audi, get the house, you know, you start because you haven't been living for so long. Mm -hmm. And then and then one day, like the light bulb hopefully clicks and you're like, wait a minute, I need to pay back my student loans. And if I pay back all this debt, like then I can do whatever I want. And that's like where I'm at right now, with like Dave Ramsey and debt repayment and really focused on paying back all the, the money that I spent in school. And I got out a long time ago. I got out, I, I went to school in 2008. I finished in 2011. So I've been out, it took me until, it took me like until 2016 to really start thinking about student loans and debt. Like I was paying the minimums. And you know, when you're, when you're looking at $150,000 at 7% interest and you're paying the minimums and then you start, you actually log on to your account, like Sally Mae or Navi, whatever, you're like, yo, my balance is going up. But the good thing about us in this profession, even if you're nurses, CRNAs, whatever, is like we have options to make that money back quickly. We just have to we just have to do it. It's not like you're sitting with a shovel of, oh, I'd make fifty thousand and my debt is two hundred thousand. You're sitting with a shovel where I make two hundred thousand and my debt is two hundred thousand. So you, you're at a one to one shovel. You just have to like hustle and not get into what your friends are doing. Like, I mean, I would go to, you know, you get out of school and then all your friends have nice cars and you're like, oh, yeah, I made it. But you got to now start putting that money back so that you can relax a little bit and you can retire and yeah. you can, you know, you can feel a little bit good about yourself. So right now I'm sending like crazy checks to, I mean, I know it was Prime Day, Prime Day the other day. I did get a whole bunch of stuff from Amazon, but normally I'm sending crazy checks to pay back the student loan, to pay back all the stuff that we had spent because, you know, not going so many years for not having money you know, it, it can be tough, but yeah, my, my advice, get into CRN school at all costs. Don't worry about how much it's going to cost. I know that's terrible advice. Jared never say this, but trust me, <laughs> just go because your return on investment is going to be crazy. You're not dealing with a job. You're not dealing with a profession where you're not going to be able to have a job. You're dealing with a profession when you can get out. And I mean, if you follow crystals, you know, she sends job info every day, like crazy jobs. Like, so if you can finish, you will be, you'll be fine. And then mm -hmm. once you finish, your just your mindset can't be, don't be like, aha, I was like, okay, well now I deserve this. Now I deserve the A6. Like just put your head down and like, just chill out and pay back. Yeah. So. Y'all, I did not tell him to say any of this. <laughs> oh, no, we rehearsed. No, I'm just playing. No, no, no. <laughs> He now they know. I mean, dude, I couldn't even. I couldn't even add you to live earlier, so they know I'm like a rookie. I'm not like media person, so it's my first time. He is saying yeah. this on yeah. his own accord. Okay, I did not pay him to talk about Dave Ramsey tonight. So, so, so this is another CRNA who is giving you financial advice. Who did the same things I did um, after graduating and was kind of balling out of control for a little while and like he said when you log on and you see that those minimum payments ain't been doing but like forty dollars on the principal you're like wait a minute because <laughs> mm. i know i i sent a whole lot more than that so um get on the ramsey plan y'all save before 100%. school or pay off debts before you start school and then after you do not live crazy don't do it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. Okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. 
I barely had a 3.0 in nursing school. What can I do to supplement my GPA for my CRNA application? Okay, so at my particular program, so sometimes you'll go to a program which has like a school attached to it. Like let's say, let's say you go to the University of Texas. Uh, let's say you go to Baylor Anesthesia School. So they have like a Baylor nursing school, right? So they have nursing school and they have an anesthesia school. So you would go to that place and figure out what kind of classes are the people taking who are getting into it. Most times they're going to take like an anatomy and physiology class, uh, a microbiology class, something kind of mixed into it. So if you take their classes, if you retake their class, I know you got a 3.0 from your school and you retake their science classes, their core classes, and you do well. And when I say you do well, I'm saying you have to do well. Like there's no... There's no, I'm going to take this A&P class from them and get a C. No, you got to go there and, like, kill them. Everybody in the competition is your, your enemy. You're slicing throats. I'm, I'm a crazy analogy. But, like, you got to go in there and just kill it. And then if you, get a, if you get A's from their program and you submit that to, like, with your application, like, yo, I know I got a 3.0, but I, I, was, I was, you know, tricking off when I was a kid. Now I got straight A's from your program in your patho class or in your A&P class or whatever, your micro class, I can compete with your students mm -hmm. and you supplement that with your other stuff, mm -hmm. like your ACLS, your, your BLS, you become an ACLS instructor, you get your CCRN, mm -hmm. you go to conferences, you know, you'd be like, yo, think about it like this. If you were applying for a school and you went to an anesthesia conference and you, and you told the program director that you, you say, Hey, you know, I'm trying to be down. I'm trying to be a CRNA. I went to this airway conference. I went to this thing that Lena did, and I got the certificate, and I'm a right. nurse. They would right. be like, oh, this dude is like two years ahead. Like, this dude is really trying to, trying to get with it. And you're yeah. not going to put all your eggs in one basket. That's the number one thing. Like, there's so many people I talk to, like, yo, man, I'm only going to Texas. I'm only going to USC. I'm only going here. No, you got to go. You got to look at 105 schools, 110 schools. You got to be willing to go to Puerto Rico. I didn't speak Spanish. I was like, how hard is it to learn Spanish to learn the <laughs> anesthesia if I only get in Puerto Rico? Like, you got to be crazy because, like, when you do that, you're going yeah. to get results. You know, yeah. I mean, I honestly, I honestly feel like, I mean, this, this is on everything. I feel like if I was able, I know people say that all the time, but I feel like if I was able to get into school, I feel like anybody can get into school if they just apply, if they like, they read, if they read your book, if they figure out what they, if they talk to people. I mean, they're going to do it. They just got to be dedicated to the process. And once they, once they get in, they got to stick with it. Like you can't, people are going to try you. People are going to tell you that you don't belong there. You're not smart enough. They're going to, I mean, you cannot listen to what anybody says. You just got to put your head down and finish. And once you finish, you're sitting, sitting at those loans, then you're going to knock them out. That's right. And I just <laughs> will add this. Um, yes, you can get in, but you have to do the work. Like, oh yeah. You, you got to do the work. Um, I said it the other day, you know, we will guide you. We will kind of show you a little bit of the way, how to, how to do things, how to contact people, but you have to be the one going to get it. You have to be the one willing to study, willing to travel, willing to whatever, leave your family. You have to do that work. We cannot do that for you. So Absolutely. that, yeah. That yeah, and I, I don't want to say, difference. God, I, I don't want to say your family is going to be there anyway, but they're, I mean, you're, look, I have pictures of my, and I wish they were here, because, but they're, you know, they're out of town. I have pictures of my little boys when they were, you know, baby, baby, babies, and I would feel like, man, this sucks, like, I'm leaving them, and like, dude, my kids don't remember any of that stuff. Like, they literally, I mean, it's not, in the long run, it's 20, 24 to 28 months of your life of you just buckling down and doing it and getting it done so that for the rest of your life, you can chill. And the phase that I'm really looking forward to in my career, so like, I, I tell you, I'm seven, seven years out. I'm going to work every day, seven to three, got a great schedule, like a teacher's schedule. Like I have, I have what they call a lifestyle job. So I don't have to do anything particularly hard. Like, I mean, I have, you know, ASA threes and fours, maybe sometimes, but I mean, for the most part, I work in a nice medical center. It's, it's pretty stable. At some point, you, you left your family for a little bit. You finally do it. You're going to get these jobs, these PRN jobs, these 1099 jobs, 
that Chris was talking about. And you can work one day a week, you know, two days a week, make it a lot of money. Some people would just work for the summer and like they'd be done. So, so that's eventually where you want to get to where, yes, you've sacrificed time with your family for 24 months, 28 months. But on the other side of that, a couple of years out, you can just kind of relax and take an easy job and make way more money than you would ever make in your life. So it's, and let me preface, it's all good things because you're helping people. When people see anesthesia, they love you. I had, I had a 14 year old girl today who was crying. I gave her some Versed. She, she felt good. Like, I was like, man, I really was able to like help these people. So it's not like you're, you're getting money, like killing people or hurting, like you're really doing something good that the world needs. It's a very noble profession. It's an honest profession. It's something you can be proud of. So you just have to buckle down for 28 months or less. Maybe now for y'all, y'all are getting doctorates now. So y'all might be like 36. A little bit more. Whatever, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But it's but all good. But still, that, that time goes by. Like you said, you've been out for seven years. I've been out for six mm -hmm. years now. And I still remember, you know, when my Facebook memories pop up and I'm, you know, woe yeah. is me because I, you know, I've bombed out on this interview. I still didn't get a yes. You know, I got another no. And now look at me six years later you know, I'm doing lives talking about the profession. So, um, yeah. and the jobs are out there. The jobs are not going anywhere. The jobs are out there. You will have a job when you graduate. You can have two and three jobs if you want when you graduate. Mm -hmm. One dude I follow, he works like 18 shifts of, of, what is he? He, I don't even know how he does 18 shifts in a row. Yeah. In a, I, yeah. I'm post call now. So, I mean, I work, you can. I, I, I worked, so my normal sketch, uh, shift is seven to three. So last night I worked seven to three of my normal shift. And then at 3.30, I went on call. So then I worked from 3.30 to midnight. So that was, that was 16 hours. And then this morning I woke up and then worked another seven to one thirty. And then I, I'll work on the weekends. Now I work a lot just because I'm paying off debt. But yeah, you're, you can work as much as you want. Like you can work as much as you want, as little as you want. Like, like you said, you said Mims was in here. Sometimes like, you know, she'll throw me the 1099 alley-oop. So if I'm off one day for my normal job, I'll get the PTO from that one job and then work 1099 somewhere else. At, so I'll be working at, at the one time, I'll be get, basically double dipping, getting two checks. So yeah, it's crazy. And we got a dude I know, yeah. like he, I mean, he, like you said, he's working, he works at almost every hospital in Houston. Like, like if we don't want to pick up any of our call, like we holler at him and like, he'll pick it up for us. So yeah, mm -hmm. plenty of opportunities, plenty of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. We have a few more minutes. Uh, let's see. Make sure I ask all the questions. Oh, how, how does someone find a CRNA mentor? Very, very, very difficult at the time. I don't know how you would do it. Now, I feel like it's super easy on Instagram. Like, like your girl, um, I mean, you, like you're an author, like you're, you're open to people to mentor. Um, uh, your girl, like Aisha, SRNA, like seems like she's like, all these people, these like Instagram people like are super down to mentor. I'm a normal person. Like I'm not like, but yeah, anyone is free to like DM me or whatever. I mean, there's plenty of people to like, to you know like now i feel like with social media now i would not be surprised if you can use the hashtag crna and probably find somebody now where you're going to find now where you're going to run into problems now in like 2019 i feel it's like shadowing because like at my hospital i don't know if you can really shadow shadowing is like when you you call a crna and they'd be like yo i want to walk around with you and see what you do and then come in the hospital now they're real shady with that because like people drugs come up missing and people die and people don't want their family to be like who's this person with you oh this is a girl i met off instagram she wants to do my job what so like now it's a little bit harder but as far as like talking to people i mean i feel like you're the perfect resource i would start with you like i'd be like hey crystal mentor me help me and mm -hmm. i think that if you're too busy i feel like you would throw it throw it to somebody else but i think i think i think that's like the easiest way now in 2019. Instagram. I mean, I mean, pretty much everyone that I've done a live with has been um, receptive to mentoring. Um, if I cannot, uh, the, the place I currently work at doesn't allow shadowing unless you're like already a nurse in the ICU and has like kind of a lot of red tape you have to go through. But I, you know, 
if I know somebody, you know, I know a couple of CRNAs down in North Carolina and you live in North Carolina, then I'll link you up with them. If I know, you know, you and LaTanya are in, are in Houston, then I'll link you up with them. So you just have to be proactive. Um, like uh, you were saying, we are more uh, out there now. It was much more difficult when we were all trying to get in. Um, I am a normal person too, because you said you were normal. No, what I, what I, what I, <laughs> let, let, let me let, let me let me walk that back. What I'm saying is like, to me, I don't want to say you're a celebrity. I don't want to say you're a celebrity, but I feel like you're a. I feel like you're like. A per, like a real like, like I feel like I'm talking to like not Cardi B or somebody but I'm talking to like a person who's like a per like a real like a celebrity like a person like they were like I'm like you know what I'm saying like this is where I put my foot in my mouth basically I'm saying I'm honored to be here I feel like I, I'm, I'm hanging out with Oprah and okay, I'm just a normal you, you feel What's me it? yeah like I'm like a normal yeah like I'm just like I'm just a regular like where you're like a media like you're person like you're like like I'm honored you know, so, yeah, that's what I mean. Whew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, influencer. Okay, I'll, I'll accept that. Yes, Over. yes, she's an influencer. Okay. Well, thank you. And, you know, that. let me also say this, because I'm probably not going to get the time. It is so hard to, like, how do you read these things when people are saying, like, I – now I know why, Listen. like, whenever I'm on a live, how no one responds. I'm like, why is it they, they respond to my question? So if we if we didn't get it, it's because I'm trying to look at you and look at me. And, like, now I'm seeing, like, oh, people are, are typing stuff. So anything yes. any of y'all said, like, I swear I'm not trying to ignore it, whatever. Yeah. So, so if you go back to my live six months ago when I first started doing this, I was terrible. I was terrible. I was trying to read what mm -hmm. everybody was writing. I was getting distracted. The hour was up, and I had only talked about, like, one thing because uh, mm. I was so busy scrolling and stuff like that. So it, it does definitely get better uh, with time. It is a little bit easier for me as the host to kind of watch them as you're talking. Oh, okay, um, all right. So, so that it is, you know, that is something too. But but you're right. It, it's a lot going on during a live. And yeah. I don't even have I'm glad I did it. I'm glad you did too. Yeah, I because like now great. I'm never I'm never going to be offended again when I look at other people's lives and they never answer. So now I know. Like I used to think it was me. So yeah, it's just difficult. And they got we got like a thousand people. We got like thirty. Wow. Huh. Exactly. I'm like I don't even have that many people watching right yeah. now. But but now now they do watch overnight because I share this. Oh yeah yeah yeah. For hours and. When I wake up tomorrow morning, three hundred people will have seen this, and then yeah, and I'm probably gonna I, share it too. Now that now that I know I didn't bomb totally, so now I can probably tell my coworkers <laughs> like, "Hey, you know, I did this thing yesterday." <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> you're really good, and you're hilarious. So, so I Aww. actually this is a really good one. I hope you'll let me put this one on YouTube. Um, of course, so we yeah. Can talk about that. But um, we only have a few more minutes left. Remember, I told you the hour goes by. So yes, quickly. yeah, it does. It does. And I was nervous. I'm like, what are we going to talk about for an hour? So yeah, I know you thought are. it was only going to take five minutes. Look at that. I <laughs> did, yeah. Because like, like I said, like when you say the real person thing, I was like, well, what is she going to – am... and I, was, I should have read your question. I was going to read, but I'm like, well, I don't want to be rehearsed. So, yeah, I'm glad that it, that it worked out. So No, this has been awesome. Um do you want to close with any final advice, words of inspiration, uh, whatever? Yeah, the final advice, like if I was telling myself something uh, 10 years ago, it's do not worry about what people are going to say. Do not worry about what people are going to think about you. Keep your head down. Do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. The time is going to pass anyway. I know that's so cliche. Don't listen to what people are saying right now about taking out too many student loans. I mean, listen, you will not find a CRNA with more, because my wife's a dentist, you probably not find a family with more student debt than, than me. But I guarantee you next year when we pay it off and we're, you know, talking to Dave Ramsey and we're saying like, we're debt free, we do our debt free screen, it's yeah. all going to be worth it. So, yes. you know, just, just, just focus, just focus and just get it done. I mean, you guys can all do it. You're already way ahead of where I was because you guys actually know what you want to do. And I kind of like fell into it by, by luck and by grace and by God. So you guys are all going to do it. 
the more of you out there who do this, the stronger our profession is going to become. So, you know, onward and upward uh, for, you know, my 1906 fans out there, onward and upward. So thank you. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't rehearse? I swear to God, like, this is like, I'm happy that I didn't, I was, I thought I was going to stare at this for a couple minutes and uh, maybe because I'm post-call and I didn't sleep. Maybe. I didn't, I really didn't sleep much, but I'm delirious. Maybe. And then my kids, my kids aren't here. My wife aren't here. So if they were running around the background, maybe I'd be super nervous. Like, dad, what are you doing? <laughs> um, so, but yeah, it, yeah, I'm glad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for like, just thank you for reaching out to like a normal, regular working CRNA. Like, keep doing this, you know, keep doing this. You know, there's more I, normal people like this out there. I, <laughs> We're not I normal, you know what I mean. to, Yeah. Yes, yes. No, I know what you mean. And I'm so grateful that everybody that I've pretty much asked has been on board and willing to help and willing to share their story because inspiration, motivation, education are my three intentions and y'all are helping me to do that. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. you. And before Instagram cuts off on me, I'm going to cut off on it. So mm. have a wonderful night. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs>